Hey guys, this is Brennan from Sonic Electronics and today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your new car stereo harness to your vehicle harness utilizing uh, the basic connections in the industry. To start off, I just want to show you the tools that are required for this procedure. We got our crimps, wire strippers, and if you're soldering and heat shrinking the wire, obviously we need our solder, uh, soldering iron, solder, and heat shrink. So to start off, I'm going to show you some examples here that we have which is from primary wire uh, with the connections that, I, that will be shown in this video today. First we have the buck connector. This is an 18 to 22 gauge buck connector which is most commonly used uh, in the car stereo world to connect your vehicle's harness to your aftermarket car stereo harness. This is the one I prefer to use because it's quick, easy, and it still maintains a nice uniform harness. Granted, you do get some bulk on that harness from the buck connector. Next, we have our crimp cap, which is actually the simplest connection that you could possibly make. Uh, make. Uh, it's actually very similar to uh, a wiring nut in home applications, but we actually have to crimp it instead of actually just screwing it onto the wire. This is very basic, straightforward, makes a nice, good, solid connection. Now the downside is, if you can imagine having about 13 other wires around this with crimp caps, you're going to have a pretty bulky harness to try and get back into that dashboard. Last but not least, we have our solder and heat shrink, which is actually one of my favorites because it provides you the best connection possible. Um, here I have pre-soldered the actual wire before I heat shrink to give you the, the nice example of what it actually should look like. When you solder a wire, when you actually twist the wire together, and you, and you heat up the actual copper, you want to make sure the solder soaks all the way through. It's not a dab, not half the wire, because that's not going to give you a nice, solid, true connection. So here we have the solder and heat sh shrink. As you can tell, it's a very nice, solid connection. I'm not going to be able to rip that apart, unlike a buck connector, which I, hey, I may be able to, just like that. Just pulled it right apart. So in order to make sure the, sh uh, the heat shrink is properly ap applied, we do need a a lighter or a heat source in general and heat up this heat shrink over the solder connection. So see there, it takes some heat. But once you get that, the wire is nice and insulated and you got a nice solid connection. Now we're actually going to show you the real world application here with some harnesses that are actually uh, pre-connected to some vehicle harnesses. For example, one here from uh, Metra. Here I use the 18 to 22 gauge buck connector. As you can see, the bulk of the wires, you got a pretty good thickness there just in buck connectors and that's not all the wires connected. I still have my power that I need to do. So as you can see there, pretty thick. Then we have our solder and heat shrink. Now granted I only did about five wires here but you could tell the major difference on how less thick the actual harness is so it's gonna make it much easier for you to get it back into the dash. So other connectors that could be also utilized, we got our crimp caps already covered, we got our 18 to 22 gauge buck connector, but you also have a different size of a buck connector. You got the 14 to 16 gauge, which is obviously used in the larger wire applications. So say if you're joining two grounds together, you'd probably want to use the 14 to 16 gauge buck connector, which are typically blue. 18 to 22 gauge are pink, which you use all day in car stereo installations. Now we got connections that you don't want to do. Uh, quite a few uh, different varieties I've seen in the industry. You get the twist and tape, which obviously you can see right there just comes right apart. It's where the consumer will do the do-it-yourself install, or I've seen other stores do this as well. I don't want to name anybody, but they just twist it and tape. Well, what happens? The tape, after time, it's going to unravel with heat inside the dash. Once that unravels, you're going to have some nice shorts and blown fuses, a lot of headaches. So always use the proper connection. Uh, other instances I've seen are wiring nuts for uh, used in home applications as well. Those fall right off. Uh, I've also seen uh, bubble gum, masking tape, medical tape. I mean, anything that you probably think of, I've seen it. So when you are doing your car stereo harness, be sure, be sure to use the proper connections. As well, if you have any rem remaining wires left over that are not utilized, such as, for example, this blue antenna wire, this power antenna, you'd want to terminate with a crimp cap or a buck connector. Just leave it open. As long as the wire is insulated and there's no way it can actually short out to ground and pop any fuses, you're going to be golden. Now one final step after you complete your harness, you always want to do some zip ties. Obviously we don't want a harness that's going to be free flowing inside the dash because once you put it in there, it's just going to bunch up. But once we zip tie it, we're going to have a nice uniform wiring harness that just goes easily into the dashboard of the vehicle. Other than that, this is Brennan with Sonic Electronics, and I hope you have a great day.